So in this week's episode of Tiny House Tours, I'm going to take you inside a cozy yurt that's tucked away in the woods on beautiful Whidbey Island. The couple that built the yurt and owned the property decided to set up the space as an area for friends and family when they come to visit, as well as a vacation rental so they can share this cozy sanctuary. The inside is full of one-of-a-kind objects and inspiring pieces that would get anyone's creative juices flowing. So, let's take a tour. Make this house our tiny home. Oh. Hi, I'm Asia. I'm Jake. And this is Sweetwater Yurt. Jake and I originally had corporate jobs when we met and we both were feeling a call to doing something or spending our time with more meaning. And as we started exploring farming and realized we wanted to have our own land and create our own space, we were looking for the perfect place to land. When we learned about Whidbey, we had heard that there were lots of small farmers, farmsteaders, homesteaders, and artists. We knew this was the ideal place for us and where we would want to raise our children. We had 24 acres, visitors would come, and we didn't have space to host them. We always had in our minds, when we have some land, we'd love to have a yurt of our own. So this is a 24-foot yurt. I think that the yurt comes out to around 400 square feet. We're so used to 90 degree angles in our living spaces that having circles just changes the way you feel in a space. And I think that that's one aspect of the yurt that really appeals. We went through a process of deciding what's most important and what do we want to include. All together that really organically culminated into a space that we felt was soft and inspired by the shape itself. But when we moved here and started Sweetwater Farm, it helped a lot to have other families and other folks that have been here a lot longer guide us along and take us into the community. We realized it was important to share that with other people who may not be able to change their whole life, but they can come for a few days and reground and recenter. It's been really fun and rewarding to even find just a little piece of that to gift to other people. All right, let me show you inside the Sweetwater Yurt. We have a very functional kitchen here. There's a double stovetop burner. We also have a small conventional toaster oven. We've had guests stay up to a week and they can cook themselves basically anything they want. Oh, you'll see throughout the yurt, we have uh, a lot of driftwood pieces that we turned into very functional pieces as well. Something that was important to us when designing the interior of the yurt was we wanted every piece to have meaning or inspire creativity. Every vase, every mug, every bowl that someone would use while they're here is by a friend and neighbor. In our little town of Langley, you can watch these be created by some local artists. It's fun to incorporate parts of our community and our town into the yurt. One of the trees that are significant to us and also in the Pacific Northwest is the madrone tree. So throughout the yurt, we've incorporated madrone pieces that were naturally felled. We didn't cut any down ourselves that have been milled and used to create our countertop. Each of the different screws that were here have been covered with a local rock from the beach. Something else when we stayed in here is we noticed the plumbing from the sink. We covered that with tree bark. Some people are pleasantly surprised to find they're staying in a yurt and will have water in a full-size fridge while they're here. And creativity and inspiration was such a driving force in why we built this space and how we decorated it. We wanted to make sure we included lots for people to play with and express that creativity and inspiration. There is not any Wi-Fi, there's no screens in here, so you really are kind of forced to unplug. Without a TV, without the internet to be scrolling, you will find yourself starting to pick up a guitar or ukulele and seeing what you create. It was really important for my husband 
to have a writing desk in here. We actually did source an antique scroll top writing desk. We stocked it with as many fun things as we can think of. That's been the most fun part is to come and see what people have created. And we have some very talented folks here. With love from Texas and California, a sunny day at Eby's Landing, which happens to be our favorite hike on the island. We have people who've stayed from all over the world and each person brings their own personality and flair. Nine years old. Nine years old from California. She loves it out here, it's so cozy. This little nook is very indicative of what we were wanting to create here. It's filled with music, poetry, handmade art, flowers from the farm. We've also had a lot of fun sourcing some of our favorite records that fit the vibe of sitting in the woods and drinking a cup of coffee and tea. We love to feature some of the local musicians here too. Over here is our king size bed, the most frequent feedback we get about the yurt is actually about this bed and how comfortable it is. And I would agree. We thought about people just resting so easy in the woods. While you're lying in the bed, you really can look up, see clouds, the sky, and all the big dug fir and hemlock trees that are kind of guarding you. It almost feels like a big hug. Everything really led us to believe that the bed had to be just so big and comfortable to take all of that in and really relax. Over here, we have a dining area. This was actually the very first piece of furniture we bought. The idea of a square table really felt like it was taking away from the softness of this space. One of our favorite, favorite, favorite things about the year and when people stay is the guest book. This guest book has basically been the first thing that we go to just kind of makes all of this work really worth it. You may have noticed there's no bathroom or shower in the yurt. We do have those, they're outside. We do try to make it as comfortable as possible. So we've not only included towels, but a big organic Turkish robe to wrap yourself in as you go out to the woods. And we even went all the way down to sandals that you can wear as you walk to the shower and on your way back. While the yurt does have power, we found it's a lot more inspiring and creative to go for that off-grid feel. Um, and we've included a wood stove here. Our first and foremost method of heating the yurt really is the wood stove. This winter, our favorite thing to do was to walk through the woods to the yurt in the snow. We cooked some tea on top of the fire and it was pretty much as cozy as you can get. <laughs> yeah. This couch was a gift to us from some friends who no longer needed it. It's a sofa bed so you can fit two more people. The coffee table was made by someone on the island. In this living area, my absolute favorite piece is this footrest. This footrest was another thrift store find. It is solid and it is cushy. When someone comes and stays here, I think they can feel the authenticity and they can feel just the solidness of these pieces that you don't find at Ikea. Something that was important to us was natural light. So in addition to adding more windows, we also added on this dome. You can lay on the bed, you can sit on the couch, you can be making your dinner. No matter where you are, you can look up and see the woods and the sky and the clouds. Just be reminded that you're in the middle of a beautiful, natural place. So we upgraded on the door which is nice to have a lockable, strong, structural door. So that was a worthy upgrade. Then we extended out the porch using cedar. It really creates an open space. The basic premise of all of this is to create an immersive experience. So we've got some, uh, some lights here that I've put on a remote so that if you do want light out here, it creates some good coverage without being overly bright. It's nice to barbecue out here. You know, if you're lucky, catching some salmon and crabs, and then you're getting a true Southwoodby experience if you can grill that kind of stuff. 
the yurt is one aspect structurally the foundation is a separate aspect i wanted this one raised so this is on pier and beam foundation so how long did it take just to do the foundation of the yurt i would say a week with some help maybe two weeks chipping away at it and that's just working on the foundation if you're not doing it full time if you've got other things like we do it's you know three weeks to a month that's not even putting up the yurt itself Part of the building on the island and having a lot of farmstead friends around here is we all help each other. So at key points, I had some folks come in and help, but we all kind of show up for each other. And it becomes more fun. It becomes, uh, you know, we have barbecues and beers integrated with the building of it. And, um, and that's as much a part of the experience as, as the finished product. So the bottom here is a drip edge, which keeps water where it's supposed to be on the outside of the yurt. Obviously, worst case scenario is you've got water leaking into the yurt. So these little details make a difference. We do have um, some deep water wells here, fortunately. I did probably 400 feet of digging, trenching for the water line. For the shower, all of the structural stuff is felled trees and branches. And then these were just salvaged cedar. When I say salvage, extra stuff on the farmstead. Man, is it nice to just have a steaming hot shower and then look up and just be under the trees. I've been real happy with the Camp Lux water heaters. They're made for boats or outdoors. You know, a, a propane tank will last you a long time if you're taking reasonable showers. This was an old outhouse that was on the property when we bought it. Pretty bad shape, it didn't have a roof. So we cleaned it out and I put a new roof on it, insulated it, put a floor in it. It's got plumbing and a nature's head composting toilet. I think most of the folks that have stayed here um, enjoy the fact that it's its own space. Nature is the biggest healer. We realized it was important to share that with other people who may not be able to change their whole life, but they can come for a few days and reground and recenter. Jake and I look at each other and say, is this really our life? And in a world that I think is increasing in chaos, getting closer to the ground and in touch with the things you consume and that are around you, I think people are, are feeling that itch and I think that that's an important itch to try to scratch. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Make sure to ring the bell so that you get a notification every time I put up a new video.